This is uh, one such example from uh, Mass 8 in B3 curriculum. And as you can see, uh, this talks about the prime factorization of numbers. And all I talk about in lesson is uh, what is prime numbers? And we can separate the positive integers in primes and how do we separate, for example, number six. And that's all I talk about for the first like five minutes. And after that, they do that question I just showed you. So after the short lesson, they go through these sequence of questions. And uh, I change one single time, try to make the change small enough that students can still do prime factorizations and uh, they can figure out how to separate the numbers into product of prime numbers. Another thing I, I found very useful is consistency of strategies. And I'm gonna show you a not so good example. So this is what I used to use before. Again, a mass eight in BC curriculum. And uh, you can see, even though the questions are changing one a tiny bit at a time, some questions are asking a square root of a perfect square, and some questions are asking an estimate of a square root of numbers. So every once in a while, if you ask students to shift their strategy of uh, problem solving a bit, it creates a little bit of uh, frustration, a little bit of uh, challenge for them, which can be a good thing, but you just want to be mindful that every time you shift your strategy, there's this level of uh, frustration could happen. So as long as you keep the strategy consistent and make the question more difficult, there's a higher chance that students engage and continue to engage with the questions. And you can test these ideas I'm sharing with you, uh, with your class and see what works. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, this is the three things that I found uh, for creating your thin slice questions uh, to make it work and make it engaging uh, for your classroom experience.